What is up, everybody? Good to have you on tonight. I like that, Teresa. Super Sunday night. Good to have you on tonight. Caitlin LaValley was so excited. She was first commenter of the night. Good to see Caitlin. It was awesome to see you guys watching on uh, vacation, Caitlin. I loved it. Chauncey, what's up? Ed, Pam, Renee, Nicole, Jackie, Kelly, Bonnie, Tanya, Steve Martin, Nick, Christina, Keisha, Nilsa. Uh, it's great to see Lynn and Doreen, uh, Chanel, Mary Sue, Angela, Robert. Good to see everybody. Jeannie, Kelly and Bill. Love you. Marsha, what's up? Ruby, Austin, Ted and Ashley. Love you. Tina, Tyler, what's up? Take a minute to share it. Today's day two of the fast. If you're joining us, 21 days of fasting and prayer. Um, I, an I announced it last week. And uh, my father texted me and he encouraged me. He said, let's, let's hit it hard. Let's go after it. 21 days fasting and prayer. And uh, it, it absolutely jumped in my spirit. Uh, we're getting ready to go starting this coming Sunday uh, to York, Pennsylvania, where the tent is being set up again. Uh, and if you guys didn't know, we finished in Moorfield with 101 first time decisions for Christ, as well as 52 children who gave their hearts to the Lord. Hey, Candy. Hey, Rossi. Eric. Cody's in the house. What's up? Rhiannon, good to have you. Amy Wallace Williams. Janet and Jeanette, good to see you. Sarah, Ruth, what's up? Um, powerful meetings, man. And we're, we're starting up again on Sunday in York, Pennsylvania. The tent's back up again. And um, we I know, as we've been declaring, you know, we've been setting our faith that uh, the last six months of 2020 are without a doubt going to be the best months we've ever had. And I, I taught you this last week. I was, I was talking about the fact that when a word comes, you know, we looked at this in 2 Kings chapter 7. Hey, Jerry, love you, buddy. Isha, what's up? Diane, good to have you on. Jerry and Cheryl, Kelly. Um, when a word comes to you, you don't just sit back and throw it into cruise control and say, yeah. Can't wait for God to manifest that. You go after it by faith. And that's what we're doing right now. We're going to go after it by faith. We've been confessing. Not only will 2020 be the greatest year, but the last six months in particular, God's going to accelerate his purpose in our lives. We're going to see explosive growth and uh, testimonies are going to be in our hands. Miracles are going to take place. And I've been declaring it. it's going to be the best six months not just of this year, of any year that we've ever closed out with in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we're going to go after it. And one of the ways, of course, we always start, hey, Letty, uh, Steve Martin said, are you doing a 6 a.m. to 6 p.m.? I'm doing just a total fast. I'm doing the whole 21 days just like we do in January. Just only liquids, no food all day long. Um, and so I want to encourage you to join us. If you're not already on, jump on. You're not too late. We're going to go for 21 days. Maybe if you if you feel like, man, I can't do the whole 21. I've never even fasted before. Um, that's all right. Do as much as you can uh, in this period of time. And set your faith with ours that this is going to be an explosive end to the year. And we're already seeing testimonies take place. Um, people are already writing in with promotions and bonuses. They're getting benefits. People are getting laid off. And people that are testifying are saying, others are getting laid off. And I keep getting promoted. I keep getting raises. It's just God working on our behalf. And um, it's my belief and, and my declaration from the word, he's going to show himself strong and mighty on our behalf in Jesus' name. That's what we're going to see. And so we're pressing in. 21 days of fasting and prayer. It started yesterday, and we're going all the way through July 31st. It's the 11th through the 31st. Do what you can do. Letty's doing a six to six fast. Do what you can do. But join us, pray fast. Now tonight, uh, obviously is our first session of the night sessions this week, but tomorrow begins our, uh, pretty much our super schedule. We're doing three broadcasts a day starting tomorrow. So 10 30 AM will be the normal broadcast. And then of course, every night this week, 9 PM, I'm building your faith. But on top of that, Carolyn is also going to be doing at 3 PM every single day a common sense guide to homeschooling. And so we're inviting all of you 
that I know so many people have had thoughts about, should I begin to homeschool my children, especially with everything that's going on in the world? You know, is homeschooling the best option that we have right now? Um, but maybe you felt overwhelmed or maybe you felt like you didn't understand what you should do next or how you're going to do it. Maybe you don't feel like you could do it. Starting tomorrow at 3 p.m., Carolyn is going to be doing this session all week long, Monday through Friday, on A Common Sense Guide to Homeschooling, where she's going to talk about, uh, you know, just tips, tricks. She wants to encourage you with what she's been doing. Now, Carolyn's been homeschooling for like five years now, and uh, we've been all over the world while doing it, you know, on planes, in the car, in hotel rooms, in lobbies of hotels, in church lobbies, you know. And uh, so she wants to talk to you and encourage you about what you can do next uh, to help if you're if you're looking to go that direction. And a lot of people are. A lot of people are. They recognize and realize that um, our public school systems are cesspools and indoctrination centers basically nowadays. Even with private schools, you know, even private Christian schools. Many of them are like Southern Baptist or Presbyterian. They don't believe in the infilling of the Holy Ghost. They'll argue with you. Uh, so let me encourage you, every person uh, that wants to have any kind of information on, on homeschooling and how to do it, what to do next, don't miss these afternoon sessions at 3 p.m. because they're going to be fire. Bonnie Benedict said, explain the six to six fast, please. In the Bible, one of the things the people of God did from time to time is a uh, sun up to sun down fast. So it, it's in the Bible, but it, it's a biblical fast. It's sun up to sun down. And uh, normally if we're going for a real long period of time, um, people have done that. You know, if we're doing 30 days or, you know, like Pastor Attaboy a few years ago called a 100 day fast and they were doing sun up to sun down. So it's in the, it's in the scripture. But if you're going to do that type of a fast, you know, really press in in those 12 hours, you know, maybe just do water only really press in, you know, cause you're going to eat a meal at night anyway. So press in during those 12 hours, drink water, you know, pray, seek the face of God, but we're going 21 days and, um, start, start with your prayer points. We give them to you for free in the app and, uh, it's going to, it's going to bless you. So starting tomorrow, 10 30 AM, I'll meet you here. 3 PM, Carolyn's going to meet you here. And then 9 p.m., we'll be right back again with this series that we're jumping into. And um, tonight, the Lord has had this jumping up in my spirit, and that's why I wanted an extra day. I, I normally would go Monday through Friday with you, but I wanted to start Sunday because this has been jumping up in my spirit, and uh, I've got to show it to you. I've got to share it with you about this benefit of fasting that literally flips everything on its ear for the believer puts us in the best possible position uh, to receive the increase of heaven. So if you haven't done it yet, take a minute to share the broadcast. I'm glad you're here, man. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this week. It's going to be powerful. But I want to show you this tonight because, and I, I want you to take notes, get a, get a notebook out, get a pen, write this down because what I want to show you, one of the, and I believe one of the most powerful benefits during a time of fasting and prayer, it's what I'm going to teach you tonight and why it's so extremely important. Hey, Tyler, love you, buddy. Terry Keegan, love you, man. Appreciate you guys and love you so much. When we fast and pray, many things happen. You know, for years they taught us, you know, the only thing that really happened was, you know, you're just putting your flesh under. You know, if you've ever heard that, throw a hand up in the comments. Now, all fasting does is put your flesh under. It does far more than that far more than that. And um, I'm going to talk to you about some of those things this week, but tonight for sure, this, what I'm getting ready to show you is so vital in the life of a fasting and praying believer. And I want to show you how it works because one of the things <laughs> I was on a group chat today with a pastor friend of mine and um, um, my cousin, Jonathan, and uh, we were kind of joking around and my father's preaching and uh, the, 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 pastor said, I had to pray with brother Ted, talking about my dad and, uh, and his mom about brother Teddy's doctrine, you know, just making a joke. I mean, he, he's not really being serious. He said, I was, I was praying that God would fix his doctrine. And, uh, I wrote back, you know, just kind of, and, and I mean this, I said, I'm just thankful that in my generation, I have recognizable doctrine when I'm done preaching. 
And what I mean by that is one, and I did a broadcast on this not long ago. One of the downsides that's happened in America, Western Christianity, Europe, America, Canada, one of the downsides we've experienced is that many of our seeker sensitive churches have gotten away from preaching the doctrine of scripture and have focused on very surface level uh, series in the churches. Some of them even go into stuff that's secular, secularly based. Um, and it's produced a generation of Christians who don't know what they believe from the word of God. They're not solid in foundational doctrines of the church. They don't know what they believe about uh, healing or the baptism of the Holy Ghost, none of those things. And so they're in a, in a very weak position because they don't know what's up. So I wanted to show you one of the things that takes place when you fast and pray that is such a massive benefit. First of all, let me just congratulate you and commend you because I will tell you this, just by being a fasting, praying believer, you're already in like the top 1% of believers, especially in America, Canada, and Western Europe, because the, not only does the average Christian not fast and pray, the average Christian doesn't pray. Like, I don't know if you know this. I put this up in one of my books as a statistic. I, I looked it up online and found this out that polls have shown that the average Christian prays less than five minutes a day. I've given you that on here. And that includes their mealtime prayers. So the average Christian's not praying. And I guarantee if they're not praying, l listen to me, if the average Christian isn't even praying, you can believe they're not missing meals to seek the face of God. Because the strongest thing that cries out at you when you're doing this is your flesh. When you take meals away and you start fasting, your flesh starts screaming, give me food. So if they're not even fasting without or if they're not even praying without fasting, trust me when I tell you the average believer is not fasting either. So just by you being dedicated to fast and pray, it puts you in like the top 1% of dedicated, faithful believers around the world. And I commend you for that. And I, I really do congratulate you because trust me when I tell you, as time's coming to a close, God's not looking for just some part-time believer, some part-time lover. He's looking for people that are literally pressing in with everything they've got, dedicated to the kingdom, faithful to his word. And I'm telling you, Tyler said, praying in speed tongues over their Big Mac. You better believe it. I'm just telling you, God's looking for faithful, uh, dedicated people in these final moments of time. And, you know, I talk like this and people get offended, but catch this. It's not some kind of an option to fast and pray. I mean, I, I hope those of you that are watching, at least on this broadcast, understand it's not some kind of an option to fast and pray as a believer. It was commanded by Jesus, commanded by Jesus. First in Matthew chapter six, you know, the Bible says Jesus is teaching on three different things. When you fast, when you pray, when you give. So he's teaching that during the Sermon on the Mount with an, un, it's, it's understood by Christ that you will be doing those things, right? When you fast, not if, but when, when you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, when you give, not if you give, when you give. So Jesus is teaching that with the expectation that his children would fast and pray. Did you know that when they came to Jesus and asked him about his own disciples, they said, how come the disciples of John fast, but your disciples, your followers don't fast? He said, you don't fast when the bridegroom is with you. But he said, there's going to be a day where I'll be taken away and then they will fast. So, you know, if you uh, study even church history, even the early church, did you know that the early church fasted two days every single week? two days a week throughout their whole lives. They did that. The early church, the early Christians, two days a week. And I believe it was on Wednesdays and Fridays. They would fast two days a week. So they already understood the expectation of Jesus. They were already pressing in. They were already dedicated. So people think when I talk like this, that, you know, like, well, you're just, you're making a big deal 
Um, you, you're just making a big deal out of some small thing about fasting and trying to put believe. I'm not trying to put any believers down. I'm encouraging believers to jump in and join in because we're believing for the greatest days we've ever seen. And this is an expectation of Christ for his people. Let me say it a different way. Good to see you. Glad, glad you're on from Abuja, Nigeria. Love you. Join these broadcasts. Um, what, what, what time would it be in Abuja? About 3 a.m.? It's about 3 a.m. in Abuja. I'll be on every, every day, 3 a.m. Central Africa time. And what would it be? About 4.30 p.m. Central Africa time. So it's not me trying to put down believers. This is an encouragement to people to press in and get your miracles, press in and get the power that God has reserved for you and his manifestations. It's an expectation of Jesus for his people to fast. But he didn't just say do it. There are actual benefits that come from the word of God when we fast and pray. Tonight, I want to show you something that's so extremely important about fasting. I think this is one of the biggest things that breaks us loose as believers when we fast and pray. And uh, as I said a moment ago, the average Christian, not only are they not praying, fasting, they're not studying the word of God, not reading the word of God. Did you know they're telling us the majority of preachers that graduate from seminary or Bible school have never read the Bible through one time? I'm talking in the 90% have never done it one time. So if preachers aren't doing it, then explain to me how Christians are doing it. Because if the ministers are up here calling people to a standard and the people are trying to get to the standard, then let me let me explain to you. It's not being done by Christians either. So we need to study. We need to read and pray. But let me, let me show you this now. There's my friend, Pastor Jordan Work. Let me show you this now. I believe this is probably the most powerful benefit of fasting and prayer. And uh, that's why I want to take tonight. It's been burning in my spirit and I've been wanting to talk about it. And so I'm going to talk about it and show you why tonight. Jump on with me to Isaiah 58. And uh, I want to show you just one verse here and then we're going to jump over to 1 Corinthians. And uh, Morgan, stick with me. This is going to help and encourage you as well. And so those of you that haven't taken a minute to share, share it now. If you haven't jumped in on the fast with us, jump in today and start fasting tonight, tomorrow. We're going 21 days and God's going to touch us and bless us. Isaiah 58, listen here, um, verse six, is this not the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of wickedness, undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke? Jump down to verse eight. Now he begins to list the benefits for fasting here. And he said, when, talking about when they'll begin to fast and pray, then shall your light break forth like the dawn. One translation says, like the morning. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn. So I want to really dig into this one right here because this is so massive. It'll turn your whole life on its ear. It'll open your future up like nobody's business. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to show you. What does it mean many times when the Bible's talking about light in this type of a way? Well, one of the things we know it means is we know that it means revelation knowledge of the word of God. We know that. In, in other passages, we see it clearly. I'll read to you Psalm 119 and verse 130. Listen to this. The unfolding of your words gives light and it imparts understanding to the simple. So the unfolding of your words. One translation says the entrance of your words brings light. The entrance of your words brings light. And so one of the things that takes place is that the uh, the Bible says in, Ephes in the book of Ephesians, one of the things that happens as we become saved and the Holy Spirit's made available to us, the eyes of our understanding are what? Enlightened. You see that? Paul prayed that prayer for the church at Ephesus. He prayed that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. That they would have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now this is massive. Catch this tonight. A spirit of wisdom and revelation. The eyes of your stand, understanding being enlightened. 
Hallelujah. That you would know the hope or the glorious calling of uh, those that are in Christ Jesus. So there is a an eye-opening revelation that takes place to God's people. Have you ever been reading through the word of God and come across a verse that you've read 200 times and all of a sudden, like by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you see something in that verse that you've never seen before. It's revelation. It's revelation knowledge. How does that come? It comes by the Holy Spirit who leads you and guides you into all truth. And one of the things that takes place when we fast and when we pray, according to Isaiah, your light breaks forth like the morning. Supernatural wisdom and revelation of the word of God begins to happen when you fast and pray. Now, this is massive because all of the things of the spirit, one of the things that it's, it's known as the secrets of God, <laughs> if you could catch this man, the secrets of God. Job said, oh, that I were as in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Job is talking about the secrets of God. People ever wonder, how did Job become so mighty? How did he get, how did he accumulate so much? How was he so blessed? He actually gives you the insight as to how the secret of God was upon his tabernacle. That's before he was attacked. There's before any of that stuff happened. The secrets of God were upon his tabernacle. You watch and see for the faithful, for those that are pressing in, God's going to begin to reveal his secrets unto you. I'm, I'm just telling you, if you would catch this man, it's so powerful. God is going to reveal his secrets unto his people. Let me read you a verse. Listen to this. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Hear, hear this verse. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. You see that? The secret things belong to the Lord, our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and our children. So it's up to God to reveal his secret things to his children. Do you realize it's not that God doesn't want to reveal secret things to people. It's that many people are so disconnected from his voice that they never get in on his secrets. Thank you, Brother Ben. Some people are so disconnected from his voice that they never hear his secrets. It's not that there are times where the Holy Spirit's not speaking. It's that there are many times we're not hearing. Real, realize that. God is never not speaking. <laughs> Put it in the comments section tonight. I want you to get this. Put it in the comments and say, God is never not speaking. Because, you know, I, I hear people, they'll come to me, Brother Ted, I just want you to know the Lord's just not been speaking to me. He's just not been speaking. I want you to put it in the comments. God is never not speaking. Never. I know a better way to say it is God is always speaking, but I want to say it the way I said it because I hear so many people say, well, God's just not speaking to me. I'm just, he's not speaking right now. God is never not speaking. He's always speaking. He's always speaking. As long as you've got a purpose, as long as you've got a call, as long as there's an anointing on your life, he's always saying something. The Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you into all truth. There's no way that he could be leading you and guiding you if he's not speaking. He's always speaking. He's always leading. He's always guiding. His voice is always there. The problem is that many believers cannot hear his voice. It's not because they've been excluded. It's because their flesh is so strong, so strong that it overpowers them. And their spirit man is so insignificant in comparison to how their flesh has been fed that they just can't seem to hear what God is saying. But see, this is the power of fasting coupled with prayer. 
is that sometimes believers let their flesh gain so much strength and so much power. And hear what I'm saying. There's an issue because all day long, every day, your flesh will be at war with your spirit. That's Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. Paul said the flesh is at war with the spirit. Your flesh is not regenerated yet. It doesn't want to please God, but your spirit always does. And so there's always a fight going on. Paul said, and he was one of the greatest apostles of the New Testament. He said, it's going on in my flesh. It's going on in my flesh. So that there are times when I don't do, if I don't, and he said this in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, if I don't put my body under on a daily basis, there will come a time I'll be disqualified. Now that's a scary thought. But remember this, he acknowledged the fact I've got to daily put my flesh under. And that's the key. Many people have done nothing whatsoever to crucify their flesh. They just let it run rampant. They let it do whatever it wants to do. And it becomes a a, a massive hindrance. Have you ever seen people that don't discipline their children and their children just are allowed to do whatever they want to do? They run around the mall. They run around the store. They scream. They cry. They throw tantrums on the floor to the point where their parents have to put a leash on them. And I mean, it's like, a leash backpack because your kid won't listen to your voice. People let their flesh get to that place where their flesh is just doing everything it wants to do. It won't pray. It won't read the word. It won't faithfully attend church. The average Christian attends church once every five weeks. Think about that. Hey, Oscar, once every five weeks, that's not dedication, my friend. That is not faithfulness. But what's happening? It's that Christians are letting their flesh get built up, built up, built up, and they don't let their fl- they don't let their spirit gain nutrients, and all of a sudden you're you're lopsided because your flesh is so strong and powerful and pulling you towards what feels good, and your spirit's squeaking and croaking on the side trying to do what's pleasing to the Lord. But one of the things that's so wonderful about fasting and prayer is that fasting is the quickest way to tell your flesh to shut up and to strip its power. I want to I want to say this and put it in the comments. Fasting is the quickest way to strip power from your flesh. Fasting is the quickest way to strip power from your flesh. Needs to be said. It's the quickest way You know, that's why when people are like, well, you know, I'm just going to fast social media. Doesn't have the same effect. Doesn't have the same effect. It's not, it's not a scriptural fast. Well, I'm just going to fast TV. Doesn't work because your flesh is still strong. Your flesh is still strong. You you, listen, if fasting TV and social media was a real fast, everyone in the Bible fasted every day of their life because there was no social media or TV. So listen to me, don't get caught up in that 21st century Christianity, that westernized Christianity. When people fasted in the Bible, they didn't eat. They didn't eat. That's what fasting is. You don't eat. Well, I'm going to fast going to the mall. That's not a fast. Your flesh is still strong. It's still pumping. It's still doing what it wants to do because you've not buffeted your flesh. You got to put your flesh under. You have to steal its dominance. You understand? You have to steal its dominance. Fasting is the quickest way to strip power from your flesh. See, what happens is our flesh rises up and wants to do what it wants to do. And your spirit's not really truly able to take over because the flesh is so in control. And see, because your mind is not renewed, your mind always goes and sides with the flesh. That's why your spirit loses all the time. People's spirit loses because of the fact their flesh is not buffeted and their their mind, their soul is not renewed because people don't read the word of God. They don't pray. And so as a result, the mind is always siding with the flesh and the spirit's always losing. But see what fasting, true fasting, where we don't eat and we pray, it buffets the flesh. It puts the flesh under and says, be quiet. You're not going to do what you want to do. Not going to do what you want to do. And it's a powerful thing, man. It's powerful 
Don't get caught up in the westernized Christianity. I'm fasting desserts. Well, I'm fasting social media. I'm fasting my phone. I'm fasting Netflix. I'm fasting the mall. I'm, it's like, that's not fasting. Those are things you probably should do while you're fasting. You don't want to be fasting for 21 days, not eating, and then just binge watching Netflix the whole time. But obviously, true fasting is not eating food. There's no quicker way, no quicker way to buffet your body, to put your flesh under and to strip power from your flesh than to fast and pray. Because man, your, fa- your flesh does not want to do it. Doesn't want to do it. But you do it anyway because Jesus commanded it and it brings benefits. And notice here, the very first thing, the Bible says, then shall your light break forth like the morning. So there are secrets from God, secrets from God, that when he reveals them to you, supernatural things happen. See, because when God gives you access to his thoughts and his ways, see, this is what I love. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that God made known his ways unto Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. There's a difference between, hey, Ashley Dahman, good to see you. There's a difference between somebody showing you their actions, letting you benefit from their actions, and somebody letting you benefit from their ways. Let me, let me say it this way. It would be like Warren Buffett, the great investor that's so well-known by everybody. You know, everybody wants to know what's Warren Buffett buying in the stock market. If it would be a big difference if Warren Buffett just gave you $100,000 that he made from trading in the stock market compared to if he took you aside and said, come stay with me for three weeks. I'm going to teach you everything I know about trading in the stock market. By the time I'm done, if you apply what I'm showing you, you'll end up before you're done being a billionaire. Well, there's a big difference between benefiting from his actions and benefiting from his ways. So that's the difference. That's where we get that, um, that phrase that's become a colloquialism that if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. Why? Because in the first example, he's benefiting from your actions. But in the second example, he benefits from your ways. And that's what's so powerful is when you have access to the ways of God. Let's talk about that for a second. Because before God uh, talks about the power of his word in, in through the prophet Isaiah, he gives us uh, some input as to the power that, that it's coming from. Listen to Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So understand this. When you get access to the ways and the thoughts of God, you're on a whole nother level than being than just walking around with human thoughts and human ways. You go far beyond what anybody else could do for you and what, what they could tell you. And fasting and prayer is one of those things that unlocks your spirit man to clearly hear the voice of the Lord. It cleans out the strength of the flesh that's holding you back, putting you in a carnal position where you're not in a spiritual place to hear the Lord puts you in a spiritual position and lets you be have an open connection with the throne room of God and then he begins to deliver secrets to you. Secret things. The secret things belong to the Lord, Deuteronomy 29. But the things that are revealed belong to us. So every time, catch this, because this is so powerful, man. Every time God reveals a secret to you, it is yours forever, according to Deuteronomy 29. The things that are revealed belong to us and our children forever. So whenever God reveals his secrets unto you, they become yours and your children's forever. And fasting and prayer. One of the first things you'll see, then shall your light break forth like the morning. Revelation knowledge of the mighty word of God. I've seen things during and fast during fasting and prayer that I never have seen normal study, normal prayer. 
it unlocks it. It's like it moves the, the restrictions out of the way and gives you a free flow and a free access in the presence of God. See, the more you can remove this flesh from the equation, the more the power of God can flow out of you. Let, let, me, let, me, um, let me give you an analogy and I, that I've used many times before that I want you to see clearly again. It's like if you've ever gone to a massive dam, you know, you, you look at that, that dam, it's been all bricked up or whatever, and behind that wall is a massive amount of water. And that wall is holding that power of that water back. If you removed three bricks out of the wall and made a little hole, you'd see a stream of water shooting out. But you'd be foolish to say, well, that's not that much power behind that wall. Look at that little stream of water that's shooting out of there. That's not a powerful rushing river. Yeah, that's because you've only opened the hole that much. But if you pl blew that wall away with dynamite or C4 explosive, the entire force of that water is going to flow out and rush down downstream and wash out uh, towns and villages below and destroy things because of the power of that water behind the wall. Your flesh is that wall. Your flesh is that dam. And the more of this flesh that you can subdue, the more of this flesh you can put under, the more of this flesh that you can, as Paul said, uh, buffet, he said, I do it daily. The more you can remove that flesh from the equation, the more of that flow of the Holy Ghost that can come out of your life and manifest. See, it's, it's, and this has been something I've tried to get people to see and understand for years, that every believer that's filled with the Holy Ghost, catch this, all of us have the same amount of power. All of us. All of us have the same amount of anointing. And obviously there's impartations, there's things that take you further, as I just wrote about, in Further Faster. But you can't get, the point I'm making to you, you can't get more powerful than the Holy Ghost. And he's in you. You can't, there is nothing more powerful than that. Nothing. And you're filled with his power. So why does it look like that everybody's operating at a different level of power? It's not because some people have more power and some people have less power. It's because some people have learned how to yield to that power. Some people have learned how to discipline themselves and put their body under and stand in a place of faithfulness and dedication to the spirit of God and have learned how to, uh, to hear him on a daily basis and move that flesh and the desires of the flesh out of the way so that they can be constantly in victory. You understand? It's not different levels of power. It's different levels of release. Hallelujah. Please catch that. Put it in the, uh, put it in the comments. It's not different levels of power. It's different levels of release, man. I got to show you this. I've got to show you this tonight. And I'm going to tie this together. So you see it go to Mark chapter nine. If you, if you can catch this, this will be one of the most important things that you could ever catch in your life. If you could catch this, remove the flesh and the spirit begins to flow. The spirit begins to flow. And see, it's not different levels of power. It's different levels of release. Amen. Put it in the comments. It's not different levels of power. People look at, you know, they look at men of God that, that have gone around the world. They look at, you know, people will mention names like Benny Hinn and Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, and they'll mention people like Bishop Oyedepo and Apostle Maldonado. And, you know, the, my father, Ted Shuttlesworth Sr., or they'll talk about me or other people. And they'll say, man, well, it just seems like you're always on cloud nine. Seems like, you know, you always have these breakthroughs and miracles are always happening. It's not because we have different levels of power. We're all filled with the Holy Ghost. It's different levels of release through understanding and being yielded. Not different levels of power, different levels of release. I want to show that to you even before Jesus died, was resurrected, ascended, and was seated. I'll prove it to you from scripture. Mark chapter nine. There was, uh, there were two parents who brought their young man of a son to the disciples 
who was possessed by a demon spirit. It often caught, cast him into the fire and into the water, trying to kill him. They brought the boy to the disciples for the disciples to cast the demon out. And the Bible says they could not do it. After Jesus had given them power to cast out demons. Doesn't that confuse you a little bit? Think about that. Is that not confusing? Jesus gave them power and they couldn't operate in the power in some instances. Look at that. We're in Mark chapter nine and uh, let's go to verse 17. Someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you for he has a spirit that makes him mute. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out and they were not able. That's verse 18. Look at 19. And he answered them. Talking about the disciples. Listen. Oh, faithless generation. How long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And I want you to see this. Jesus asked, the fa- Jesus asked the father of the boy, how long has this been happening to him? From childhood, verse 22, he cast him in the fire and the water, trying to get, if you can do anything, help us. Jesus, verse 23, if you can, all things are possible to one who believes. And immediately said, I believe, help my unbelief. And he rebuked the unclean spirit. You mutant deaf spirit, I command you to come out of him, never enter him again. After crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And then the disciples asked him, why could we not cast it out? Do you see this? Why could we not cast it out? Notice, Jesus didn't say, because you don't have the same power I do. I'm the son of God. You're just my disciples. He didn't say that. Didn't say that. He didn't say, well, because you're not saved yet. You're not filled with the Holy Ghost yet. Didn't say that. He rebuked them for not being able to do it. And notice what he said. He said, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but by prayer, and some translations say prayer and fasting. So Jesus, and this is paralleled, by the way, in Matthew chapter 17. I want you to see what he said to them in in Matthew 17. Listen to this. The disciples said, why could we not cast it out? Matthew 17, 19. Now look at verse 20. He said to them, because of your little faith, For, or one translation said, because of your unbelief. For truly I say to you, if you have the faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, move and it'll be moving. Nothing will be impossible to you. And then some manuscripts still have the verse of scripture depending on which Bible you have. And this kind comes not out but by prayer and fasting. So I want you to see in this story that's parallel to Matthew and Mark, Jesus does two things. Number one, he tells them, you've not been praying enough. And if you read some manuscripts, you've not been fasting and praying enough. He didn't say they couldn't do it. He didn't say that'd be impossible for you guys. You're just merely human. I'm the son of God. He said, no, you should have been able to do it. But you're not praying like I'm praying. You're not fasting like I'm fasting. And according to Matthew 17, your faith isn't where it should be. Woo, catch that. Your faith isn't where, that's what he's telling his disciples. Your faith isn't where it should be. You know what that means? It means a few things. Number one, they weren't praying enough. They weren't fasting enough. And then finally, according to this, they weren't hearing the word enough or reading the word enough. They were not building their faith. So Jesus was not telling them they didn't have the power. Watch this. If they didn't have the power, he had no right to rebuke them for not casting the demon out right? Because if they couldn't do it, he couldn't, he can't say to them, I can't believe you. How long do I have to be with you? You faithless generation. How long do I have to bear with you? See, if they couldn't do it for real, then he should not have ever rebuked them because that would have been unjust. No, they had power. He had already given them power to cast out devils. They should have been able to do it, but they weren't praying like they should have been. They weren't fasting like they should have been. And apparently they weren't building their faith like they should have been. Ooh, hallelujah. 
Because notice this, those are the areas that Jesus addressed when the demon, they asked why we couldn't cast the demon out. I'll tell you why. Because Jesus said this, there are levels of supernatural power and you're operating right now at a low level. So I tell you again, it's not levels of power, it's levels of release of that power. It's levels of release. And fasting and prayer allow you to release the power of God that's within you. It allows you to release the power of God that's within you. You know, I, the more I look at these men of God that have shaken the world, that have changed the world, one thing I notice about all of them, that's just a running thread through all of them. They all emphasize prayer at a massive level and they all emphasize fasting. All of them. No matter who you talk to, who you... Talk about A.A. A. Allen that we always talked about, that I, I sent you that book this year if you sowed The Price of God's Miracle Working Power. He emphasized fasting and prayer. You look at um, Dr. Paul Young E. Cho, David Young E. Cho, that, that largest church in the world, Yoido Full Gospel Church in Korea, Seoul, Korea. Largest church in the world. You know what he emphasizes? Fasting and prayer. He built Prayer Mountain with grottos in it that people from his church can just go stay in the grotto in the prayer mountain and just fast and pray. They emphasize it. Dr. David Oyedepo in Ota, Nigeria. Bishop Oyedepo, you know what he emphasizes? Fasting and prayer. Pastor Enoch Adeboye in Lagos, Nigeria. You know what he emphasizes? Fasting and prayer. Dag Hayward Mills from Ghana. You know what he emphasizes? Fasting and prayer. Any of these men of God that have shaken the world, changed the world, you know what they emphasize? Fasting and prayer. You know why? Because fasting and prayer is a key to sub make your flesh submit to the will of God and to allow you, it opens you up to release the power of God that's on the inside of you. Fasting and prayer. Do you notice many times as you go through the life of Jesus, the Bible says, and he would rise up early before the dawn and begin to pray. Do you know why? Because Jesus couldn't say anything unless he heard the father saying it. He couldn't do anything unless he saw the father doing it. So unless he had that prayer connection with the father, he had no ability to do anything on the earth. And Jesus knew as soon as these people start waking up, they're going to come find me. They need healing. They need deliverance. They need miracles. They need signs and wonders. And if I don't have a download from my father, I've got nothing to give them, nothing to even say to them. So what did he do? He got up early and began to pray. In Luke chapter six, the Bible says he prayed all through the night. I was, listening to, I was listening to a preacher on television not long ago. And he actually said this, you know, he was teaching on the grace message. He said, you know, God doesn't want us praying long drawn out prayers. He wants us to pray short faith filled prayers. I thought, oh really? Short faith filled prayers. I wish somebody would have told Jesus that before he went out into the wilderness and prayed all through the night. I wish somebody would have warned Jesus about short times of prayer before he went out in Luke chapter four and fasted and prayed for 40 days. Didn't come back till he was done. No, God wants us to spend time in prayer. He wants us to. You know, if you read what Jesus said to his disciples who were sleeping in the Garden of Gethsemane, could you not hang with me for one hour? He said that to them because they fell asleep like one hour wasn't a lot of time. You couldn't even hang for one hour. Then he woke him up. Then he went back in and prayed again. Came back, woke him up, went back in and prayed again. Prayed through the night. Then after Jesus left the earth, the Bible says that in Acts chapter 3, they were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. So they had scheduled times where they were praying. It didn't even seem like an hour was a long period of time. That's why I encourage you. You know, you hear these guys talk. I heard, I heard Bishop Oyedepo say when he was directing a time of prayer and fasting, he said, for those of you that aren't, that are fasting with us, he said, if you're, and I'm going to say the same thing to you right now. If you're fasting with us, if you're not praying at least an hour a day, you might as well eat something. Because you're not serious about fasting and prayer if you're not praying at least an hour a day. Look at the things we'll do for an hour 
We'll sit down and watch a show on Netflix and binge three episodes of it. We'll sit down and watch a movie for two hours. You know, we'll go out to eat with our friends and be out for an hour and a half eating at a restaurant. But we come back and we're going to literally give up all food and press in, but we won't pray for an hour a day. I'm talking about 60 consecutive minutes straight, Billion. Exactly right. Think of the things we will do for an hour and people won't pray. You know, I'm sure many of you are like I was, where, you know, I, I was like in a place where I had never, before I started getting into many of these men of God and studying their teachings, I had, I had never spent consecutive hours in prayer before. I mean, it was, it was the same way. And the key that helped me was getting a hold of those prayer points, which is why they're such a treasure. It's why I give them to you for free. If you have our app, the Miracle Word app for Google Play Store, the Apple App Store, we make them available to you. I don't know if uh, if they may have, if Tiffany's watching, they may be, may be available. If you go to our website, miracleword.com forward slash fast, there may be a link to them in there. If not, you can easily download uh, the app for free and have access to all 100 prayer points. When I got a hold of those, I was able to pray for extended periods of time with no problem. I thought, man, I'm going to go through all hundred of these prayer points and still have, there's going to be like 50 minutes of prayer left. I got through maybe four to five of them and the Holy Ghost was leading me in every direction. I looked down an hour and five minutes had passed. And by the way, we have all of these. So Kelly's asking, what do I do with the prayer points? So we give you kingdom prayers to pray and we give you the scriptures that the prayers are based on. So it's it's a really, it's a phenomenal it's a phenomenal resource because it gets you, it's not like you have to pray them like it's a prayer book, but it kickstarts you in prayer. It puts you in a place where you can get started, then the Holy Ghost will, will lead you. Let me show you. I'm pulling up the prayer points right now on my app. You know, we have things that we thank God for first. Now, prayer point 31, ask God to supernaturally drive wickedness from your home, away from your home. The verse, Psalm 68 and verse 2. As smoke is driven away by the wind and as wax melts in the fire, uh, so the wicked are driven away. You know, so you, you, you take the verses, you pray the prayer points, and you let God guide you in prayer by his Holy Spirit. We give them to you for free. And so there's all kinds of extra resources there as well on miracleword.com forward slash fast. And uh, it's, it's there to help you. But I'm encouraging you because we need to spend extended amounts of time in prayer. If we're going to fast, we've got to pray. I, I like uh, what my brother said. Uh, he said, if you're not praying along with your fasting, it's a hunger strike. And that's exactly right. If you don't pray with your fasting, you're just starving. <laughs> you might as well eat. Get serious about it. You know, I, I'll tell you what I would rather people do. If you're going to be one of those people that goes for 21 days and like sleeps the fast away, just binge watches Netflix and, you know, does every other thing other than pray and, and just hoping that the 21 days quickly comes to an end, my, just quit. I would rather have you go for three days or seven days where you really press in and pray, you know, an hour, two hours a day and really make that time count then I would have you go for 21 days of fasting and pray five to 10 minutes a day. It's a waste of your time. If you're going to get as serious as pushing the plate away and you're believing for supernatural things to happen, like I'm getting ready to open up to you tonight, let me tell you, be serious about it. Pray, press into the anointing and pray and ask God. If you have things, let me tell you, you should come up with things you're believing God to accomplish in these last six months. You need to write them down. Write them on a piece of notepaper. If you're believing for a promotion at your job, if you're believing for your wife or husband to be healed, if you're believing you know, for your business to take off, if you're believing for your children to be saved, whatever it is, write it down and find scriptures that back those things up and begin to confess them and pray and watch God touch you by the time this fast comes to an end. I want you to see it. Now, let me show you what I wanted to get to here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is so vital because when you're fasting and praying, I personally believe this is the most powerful benefit of fasting and prayer. Your light will break forth like the morning. But why, why do I say that it's the most powerful? 
Because God does everything that he does by a word. He does it. You can't even gain faith without the word. He won't move without the word. He's exalted his word above his name. Psalm 138 and verse 2. All of those things. You realize his word is the preeminent force in the universe. When I gain revelation of his word, It opens me up to live on a new plane, a new plane of victory. That's why the Bible says in John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So I want you to put it in the comments right now. Truth makes me free. Truth that I know, add that in there, makes me free. Truth that I know makes me free. That's why the devil doesn't want you reading the word. He doesn't want you praying. He doesn't want you fasting. He doesn't want you going to church. He doesn't want you listening to these broadcasts. He doesn't want you to listen to preaching and teaching. Why? He doesn't want you to hear the word. He doesn't want you to have revelation of the word. By no means does he want that in your life. Because the more that you gain of the truth of God's word and know it and have revelation of it, it just keeps lifting you higher, higher, and higher, and you excel beyond what anybody else could have done for you. Truth that you know makes you free. And every time you gain a new piece of truth, revelation of of God's word, it breaks you out of another invisible prison. (laughs) What do I mean by that? The first time you begin to realize and were taught that Jesus is not just a savior, he's a healer. Do you know what that opened up to you? That opened up divine healing to your life. You could not have divine healing without the revelation, Jesus is a healer. You realize that. No one can operate in divine health and divine healing without the revelation that Jesus is a healer. Nobody can. The truth that you know makes you free. So when someone preached to you or taught you, he's not just your savior, he's a healer. Boom, that caused that prison door to swing open and you stopped saying, well, I guess, you know, that's just how it goes. People get sick. That's just the way of the world. No, you start to realize, no, no, no. I have a different story because I've got a redeemer who's also a healer. And now that I know the truth of his word, that he is my healer, Jehovah Rapha, I'm the God that healeth thee. Now, I don't have to live in that invisible prison where I get sick like the rest of the world because I can walk in freedom from sickness and disease because I'm standing on a revelation that I have of the mighty word of God that puts me head and shoulders above the rest. That's why Hosea chapter four and verse six, the Bible says, my people, God speaking, my people are destroyed. Why? Not because the devil's attacking, not because there's demons all around. My people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Can you catch it? A lack of knowledge. So that's the key. If you'll gain knowledge of his word, The entrance of his word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. Do you realize the devil operates in the darkness? Did you know the Bible even says that? In the New Testament, the Bible says that there are men who love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. The darkness is where the devil operates. When the light of God comes, it washes away and exposes every wicked thing that the enemy's trying to do, and it drives darkness out. See, that's why the devil wants you to stay in the dark and not know the truth of God's word. That's why he doesn't want preachers to preach the truth. That's why he doesn't want uh, churches to teach the doctrinal truth of God's word. He just wants to go through these candy coated sermons that have no power, that have no doctrinal ability to set us free. So all we learn about is seven steps to having better work relationships. What kind of a message is that from somebody who's giving you the word of life? Seven ways to have more, 
more fruitful work relationships. What a no bunch of nonsense. What a waste of time. You could go to Barnes & Noble and get that. Why are, we, why are we not preaching life from the pulpit in church? See, the devil doesn't want our churches to be filled with life or to preach life or to teach life or to be filled with the Holy Ghost and have his manifestations. That's why he fights against it. But that's why we grab a hold of it. That's it, JT. JT preached on it today on how light, revelation, and how the devil operates in the darkness. That's exactly it. He wants us to stay in the dark so that the light of God's word can't drive out every wicked thing. And see, that's what God's word does. It drives out every wicked thing. Go to Hebrews chapter 4 before we go to 1 Corinthians. Hebrews chapter 4. Let me give this to you. Look at Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active. It's not dead, it's alive. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of God is alive and it's active. It's moving, it's working, it's cutting things out and it's adding things to you. The word of God comes to you and it cuts out what does not belong and it adds to you what you should have. Hallelujah. It gives you your inheritance in the saints. That's Acts 20, 32. Paul said to the Ephesian elders, now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance amongst those that are sanctified. So Paul was teaching them that when the word of grace comes to you, it gives you an inheritance. The in my inheritance comes through my revelation of the word. If that's all I said tonight, just that is, I want you to get it. I'm going to say it again and I want you to write it down. This may be the most important thing I say tonight. So write it down. My inheritance comes through my revelation knowledge of God's word. My inheritance, talking about my spiritual inheritance, my divine inheritance. My inheritance comes through my revelation knowledge of God's word. And that's based on Acts 20, 32. And I want you to write it down and put it in your notes, put it in your Bible. If you've got Acts 20, 32 open, highlight it, underline it, put a star next to it. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that's able to build you up and give you an inheritance amongst all the, uh, those that are sanctified. So my inheritance comes through my revelation knowledge of God's word. That's what the gospel of John is saying. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. And when you fast and pray, this is why I say this. If you're wondering why I said, that I believe this is the most important benefit of fasting and prayer. It's for this reason. Nothing, Austin said, will you say that one more time? I will say it one more time. My inheritance comes from my revelation knowledge of God's word. My inheritance comes through my revelation knowledge of God's word. You see that? is that when I fast, when I pray, my flesh is getting shoved out. And, and here's where I'm going to take you here because I'm going to show you why your flesh has to be shoved out. This is why sinners can't have this benefit. Do you realize? I could sit down in front of a thousand sinners in an arena, in, in an auditorium, and sit there and speak to a thousand sinners and preach the deep truths of, of God's word wouldn't matter. They would not catch revelation knowledge of God's word. They wouldn't. You know why? They're not Christians. They're not Christians. I'll show that to you here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That's where I want you to go. I'm telling you, man, you're not going to want to miss these sessions this week because I'm, I'm telling you, I've got a fire burning in my belly and we're, we're not going backwards. I promise you that. We're not going backwards in the second half of this year. We're not going back to where we began. We are building from where we've gotten to and we're going to blow up before this year comes to an end. 
We're not going back. We're moving ahead in the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm, I'm here to encourage you and tell you, get ready. As we fast and pray, light, the word is coming into us. And we're going to see things we've never seen. Doors are swinging open. Opportunities are coming. And the power of God's going to be revealed in our lives in Jesus' name. Get ready. And don't miss these sessions, man. You're not going to want to miss any of them. 1 Corinthians 2. Let me show you why I said what I said. The Bible says here, I'll start with verse 6. 1 Corinthians 2, 6. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom. Although it's not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. Verse 7. But we impart, look at this now, once again, here's this word. We impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. Verse 8. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it's written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. Now here's what we're getting into it. Catch this. God revealed these things to us by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Look at verse 11. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we, this is verse 12, and you've got to catch this. We have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God that we might understand these things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. You catch that? The things that we're going to receive, even during this time of fasting and prayer, they don't come from the natural realm. They don't come from school. They don't come from university. They don't come, they come from the spirit of God, the Bible says. They are spiritual truths that are spiritually revealed and spiritually received. That's why. If you're not a spiritual person, you can't receive it. Do you know you can be, let me say this again. You can be a Christian this is, hard. this is hard for people to understand, but I'm going to break it down as best I can. You can be a Christian and not be a spiritual person. You're a spirit man, no question. Your spirit's alive, you're a Christian, you're a spirit man, but you're not a spiritual person. You don't walk in the spirit. Paul was actually frustrated with those types of people because look what he says to them in the very next chapter and verses one through three. He says, but I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people. He's, he's talking to Christians. But as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ, I fed you with milk, not even solid food, for you weren't ready for it. And even now you're not ready, for you're still of the flesh. You see that? They were Christians, but Paul called them of the flesh. You're not spiritual people. He said, you're not spiritual people. They had all kinds of crazy stuff going on in Corinth, in Greece. All kinds of stuff. They had a dude that was sleeping with his stepmother and bragging about it in church. And Paul had to call him out in a letter saying, tell that dude to chill and tell him that he better get his act together. And finally, he just told him, he said, now throw him out, turn him over to Satan for the destruction of his soul. I mean, they had issues in Corinth. Very immature church. He said, you're not spiritual people, you're of the flesh. So I have to feed you milk because you can't eat meat yet. But what he's talking about in the chapter before that is he's saying when God gives us these secrets from heaven, they are spiritually discerned. So they come to spiritual people and they're revealed by the spirit. Can you now see 
why the, why the devil doesn't want you walking in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Do you now see? See, because watch this. Everybody who reads these verses where, where you say, you know, walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Everybody reads that and thinks all it's about is not sinning. They, they read that verse, walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And you think that the only thing that matters, of course, no Christian should sin, but there's even great, let me show you this. There's even greater things than not sinning. You realize that there are even greater things than not sinning. That's a baseline thing. Everybody in the body should stop sinning. But do you realize there's greater things than that? Paul was listing them here. He said God has secret wisdom that he wants to give to his people that if you'll be spiritual, then you'll be able to receive things that are spiritual because they're spiritually revealed and you'll get the secret wisdom of God imparted into your life. So, you know, it'd be like me going to work while everybody else is like, you know, working hard to try to get a promotion at their job and they're focused on working really hard and I come in just bragging to everybody that I woke up this morning and tied my shoes with no help from anybody. My wife didn't help me. Nobody helped me. I just tied my own shoes. Everybody would look at me like I'm a, a nut job because every adult should be able to tie their shoes with no help. It's not anything to brag about in the same way that no Christian should go around sinning. Christians should please the Lord with their lives. And so everybody reads that verse, and thank you for popping it into the comments section, but I say Galatians 5.16, walk by the Spirit and you'll not gratify the desires of the flesh. And then we, the next verse is what I quoted to you earlier, for the flesh is at war with the Spirit. Uh, people think, well, that's just about not sinning. It's more than about not sinning. It's more than about that. It's also about being in position to receive the secret wisdom of God. And that's the thing, by the way. It's the thing that Job said caused him to explode. He said, oh, that I were in the days of my youth when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. God has secret things to reveal to you and to me that when he does reveal them to us by his power, it causes us to explode into fruitfulness, blessing, and productivity. We explode. Why? Because we hear the secrets of God. It's why Moses was able to do what he was able to do while the children of Israel were down there making a golden calf and thinking about not even serving the Lord anymore. Meanwhile, Moses comes down off the mountain. His face is glowing because he's been in the presence of God. There's a difference between people that have access to his ways and people that are just benefiting from his actions. And we're going to be the people that are spiritual, that as we fast and pray, the eyes of our understanding will open and the light of God's word will reveal things to us we've never seen before. And the secret wisdom of God will become yours and mine. And as we gain access, like Paul said, we gain access to it. It opens doors to us to see things that we've never seen and to do things we've never done and to have things we've never had. Everything in life is about being led by the Spirit. Everything in the Christian life. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, Romans 8, 14. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. There's nothing greater than being led by the Spirit of God. Nothing. Nothing's greater. And the reason I wanted to break this down for you on the very first night of this week is because one of the things I want you to be believing for as we fast and pray is that as your flesh is being moved out of the way, not only will you clearly hear the voice of God, but as you're praying, guess what's going to happen? God's going to start revealing things to you. He's going to reveal things to you that you've never seen before. Let me read you something. And this is a verse that people know, but I really wonder if they catch the power of this verse. Check it. Jeremiah 33, 
and verse 3. Listen to this. Call to me. I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Call to me. Now, let me, let me explain something here to you about me reading this verse from Jeremiah and what critics always say to people like me when I'm reading and teaching these things to you. You know what they always do? They always look and say, well, he's using that verse in the Old Testament as God was speaking to Jeremiah, one person, and it was actually in context of what God had to do for Jer- Jeremiah had to do for the Lord, and God was telling Jeremiah to call to him, and he would show him great and mighty things that he didn't know. Let me tell you something. Jeremiah wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. Jeremiah was not a new creature in Christ Jesus. Jeremiah didn't have a new covenant established upon better promises. So you can't, a better covenant, by the way, you can't tell me that God would do this for Jeremiah in the Old Testament and tell Jeremiah that if you'll call to me, I'll answer you and I'll tell you great and hidden things that you've not known. You can't tell me God would do that for Jeremiah. It's it's the same argument people have when any Christian quotes Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And people say, well, that's Old Testament. That wasn't written to Christians. That's not written for you. You can't tell me that I live now under a better covenant that's established upon better promises. I've got the Holy Ghost indwelling me. I've got power. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm in covenant with the Most High God eternally. And that you're telling me God will do better things for Jeremiah under an old, worse covenant than he will do for his people? I mean, Jeremiah, I mean, think about this. Every Christian in the New Testament that's baptized in the Holy Ghost has the ability to operate in all nine gifts of the Spirit. Part of those, which include prophecy, discerning of spirits, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, you're telling me I've got all of that and I can't stand on Jeremiah 33, 3 in the New Testament and say, God, if you did it for him, you'll do it for me. And if I'll press into your spirit and if I will ask you, you'll show me great and mighty things that I don't even know. Great and hidden things that I've not known. Of course, God's going to reveal to you hidden things that you don't know, things you've never even thought of, things you don't even know about. Of course he will. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth who will lead you and guide you into all truth. This is what I'm telling you. In this time of fasting and prayer, our flesh is falling away. Some of you may take longer than others. Some of you, maybe your flesh got built up more than others has, and your flesh is standing in your way. You feel like, man, I've had people write me and say, man, I don't even feel the presence of the Lord. He's still there. Don't go around thinking, well, I th- maybe I just committed the impardonable th- sin and I, he's just not with, no, no, he's still there. He's still speaking. He's still calling. It's just that your flesh needs to be shut up. It's been talking so long, it's been in charge for so long, it's been strengthened for so long that it's not been able to get out of the way so your spirit can be alive and see and hear what the Holy Spirit's saying. Fasting's gonna take care of that. And for people that can do it, and I'm talking, if you're not a nursing mother, if you're not pregnant, if you don't work some kind of heavy construction job where you're just constantly lifting heavy stuff and working all day long, if you sit at a desk, if you work in an office, if you're at home, I encourage you to fully fast this whole 21 days. Get your flesh out of the way and pray and hear the voice of God. Because I'll tell you when, you, when you shut that flesh down and let the spirit man hear and speak and stand up, let me tell you, things change. And you gain access to the secret wisdom of God and he starts showing you things about the future. God starts giving you access to the hidden wisdom that's from heaven. You will explode in blessing and productivity and fruitfulness. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will. John 15, 7, ask what you will and it will be done for you. It will be done for you. So I'm encouraging you tonight. Before I pray for you in a minute, I want you to hear this. 
It's going to be the most explosive six months we've ever seen. But we can't jump in without understanding and knowing this. One of the main things we're believing for is as we fast and pray, as we fast and pray, not only is my flesh moving, but I'm gaining access to the secret wisdom of God. Hallelujah. The secret wisdom of God. I'm going to see things I've never seen. I'm going to have things happen during this time of fasting and prayer that I've never had happen. Blessings are going to explode. I'm going to see things begin to take place in my family that have never taken place. That's going to be your story. So I'm encouraging you. It's time to fast. It's time to pray. Press in. Significant time in prayer. It's time to read the word of God. It's time to study the word of God. We've put together... uh, all kinds of resources for you. You can go to miracleword.com forward slash fast and you can get uh, acclimated with all the resources that we have for you. Not only that, but on top of all that, if you'll stay in contact with me via text message, I've been texting you. I'm gonna share things with you during this fast. I'm gonna encourage your spirit, give you updates about what's going on. I know you guys got a text for me today. I'm going to stay in touch with you. I want you to text me with prayer requests. We're going to do this together. And God's going to do it. Wow, Ben. That's huge. Ben said, I just came off a month-long fast a week ago. I'll go again with you, Brother Ted. I love you, man. Love you and Amy. Thanks for being faithful. Thanks for being dedicated. And I'm just telling you. My father texted me. He said, it's time to fast and pray. I said, it, 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 I know it. It absolutely is. And so he's fasting, my mom's fasting, I'm fasting, my wife's fasting, our family, our team, we're all fasting and praying, and and you're joining us. We've had so many people text back and say, I'm jumping on the fast with you, jumping on the fast with you, believe in God with you, and we're going to see it. That's right, Christina, we are the victory tribe, and we're going to see the victory in Jesus' name. We will see the victory. So if you didn't sign up to receive text messages yet, Go to miracleword.com forward slash text. Fill out the form and stay connected with me. Let me pray for everybody that's watching. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm praying now. Every person, not only those that are watching, but listening in the on the podcast, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you would give us a hunger to fast and pray. Not a Father, let that hunger for food die down. Let our hunger for your spirit. Your word declares, blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Give us a hunger for righteousness, a hunger for your word and for prayer. Let us press in like we never have and let these 21 days be explosive and set us up for the greatest six months we've ever had in the history of our life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, let us become extremely fruitful and productive Let us see the multiplication and increase of heaven hit our families, ministries, and businesses in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for it. We give you glory, honor, and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you believe that, throw some fire in the comments. If you're fasting, if you're praying and you're believing, throw some fire in there and shout amen wherever you're at. If you're next to your spouse in bed, wake them up. Shout amen. High five somebody. High five your headboard if you're all by yourself. And give God praise. It's going to be a great, great month. It's going to be a great rest of this year in Jesus' name. Let me, let me encourage you with this too. If you've not done it by faith, step out and partner with us by faith. See, part of what you're believing is what you're sowing. Your sowing is attached to your increase. It's attached to your what God can do in your life. It's the biggest representation of your life that there is. You know why? As you give your life to your job, your career, whatever you're doing, and they give you a paycheck, that's a representation of your life that you've been giving. And so I want to encourage you to partner with us. Let me tell you what I got for you. Those that are partnering and sewing largely a thousand dollars or more, this is the brand new further faster. That's the hardcover edition, limited edition. Uh, We're not selling these, but they're available for people that are standing with us at $1,000 a year or more, as well as this wonderful resource, the Life Application Study Bible, Genuine Leather, one of my favorite new resources to study the Word. That's coming with you as well, and we're going to bless you with it. 
as well as Dr. John Evanzini's book, Rich God, Poor God. We're sending that to you to be a blessing to you. Take a step of faith. Join with us. Go to miracleword.com, click on give or partner, fill out the form, and whatever the Lord tells you to do, set up a monthly seed and step out by faith and watch what God will do in you. I guarantee you you'll see increase. Caitlin, we love you too, but I guarantee you you'll see increase. You can give by PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, hashtag donate if you're in the United States. Anywhere in the world, miracleword.com. Let me uh, let me just say this quickly. I got a really, really good... I'm gonna, let, me ask, let me answer Jocelyn's question first. How long would you say a nursing mother could fast? Don't fast if you're a nursing mother. If you have to, obviously you're feeding your child every day. There will be other times to fast. Just pray. But if you're, if, you're nurse, if you're a nursing mother, don't fast. If you're pregnant, don't fast. Use wisdom. There will be other times to fast. But if you're nursing or pregnant, don't fast. Child care workers can fast with the whole time, the entire time. Thank you, Ben. Um, but let me say this, massive announcement. You ready for this? Carolyn's book lines is done at the printer and shipping to us and we're shipping it to you. We are shipping it to you. I'm so excited about this. It's no longer in pre-order phase. It's now in order phase. This book, 175 pages to build your faith from Carolyn Lyons. Confessions that create boundaries your enemy cannot cross. It's been printed. It's being shipped. We're about to get our hands on it, and it's coming straight to those of you that pre-ordered it. If you'd like to order it now, you can go to shop.miracleword.com and place your order. It'll be coming to you very soon. This book is going to be phenomenal. Phenomenal. I cannot wait for you guys to get your hands on it. It's going to be awesome. Um, Carolyn did such a phenomenal job writing this book. And it's faith building. It's, got, it's full of declarations, full of confessions. Teaches you about the power of confession. But here's what I like about it. I like the fact that at the end of every chapter, there are discussion questions so that if you're in a small group setting, a group setting, um, look at that. Carolyn has a podcast called Should Moms Fast? I believe is what someone is telling me right now. Should Moms Fast? Check that on, on the Nonstop Mom podcast. Um, the great thing, this book is perfect for group study, group uh, engagement, because at the end of every chapter, there are discussion questions about what was just covered in the chapter. It's great for home groups, small groups, church groups. Um, Alcoholics Anonymous can use it. Who, whatever kind of group you're in, um, it, it, it'll bless you. And so if you have not yet ordered your copy or copies, let me say this. if We've had a lot of people ordering um, group copies, you know, 20, 30 copies at a time. If you'd like to do that, we will give you a discount, a bulk discount on ordering a bunch of them. Just send an email to Jenna at MiracleWord.com and uh, we'll give you a, a great discount on bulk orders as well. Yes, Paula, if you didn't know, my wife has a phenomenal podcast. It's called the Nonstop Mom Podcast. You can check out everything she's got going on at nonstopmom.net, nonstopmom.net. She has articles there, podcasts. Uh, she does Facebook Lives. And don't miss it. Let me tell you, this week at 3 p.m., starting tomorrow through Friday, a common sense guide to homeschooling. You definitely don't want to miss this. It's going to be powerful. Every day this week at 3 p.m. Eastern Time uh, on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. So starting tomorrow, we got three broadcasts a day, 1030 3 p.m., 9 p.m., and you're not going to want to miss it, man. It's going to build your faith. Any questions at all? I mean, I know we covered a lot of content tonight, but I, I really wanted to get this in your spirit as we're on this fast. But any questions tonight from anybody on things that we were talking about? Absolutely, Jocelyn. You're welcome. Love you, Billion. But if you do have questions, I want to hear them 
because I want you to not only understand this, I want you to engage it. Fasting and prayer are so vitally important. You can't overstate. Maybe you've heard this quote. It actually originated with E.M. Bounds, who was a Methodist minister and wrote nine books on prayer. And he said, um, much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. And it's powerful and it's true. Um, isn't that funny, Caitlin? Oscar, right now, um, the books are not available in Spanish yet. That is on in the works. That is in the future. It's just not happening. It's just not happened yet. Um, awesome, Paula. Thank you. Uh, Jeanette says, could you say the levels of release as levels of anointing? I don't think so because I don't believe, I mean, from looking at the scripture, nobody is more anointed than anybody else in the New Testament, right? Because if you've got the Holy Ghost and he's the third person of the Godhead and he lives in your body and that's the anointing you've been anointed with, here's the question. How do you get more anointed than that? And if that's what every Christian has, how do you get more anointed than that? I don't believe you can. You just can access that anointing at greater levels by your dedication and obedience and yielding to him. I don't know that a, I don't know that fasting would affect a knee replacement buck but I pray that God touches your body and strengthens you. Scott said, I shared something the Holy Spirit showed me and it caused strife. Should I not have shared? Brings me back to the thought process of Joseph that just because the Holy Spirit shows us something, it does. it's not always so we can release it. Sometimes the Holy Spirit shows us things so we can pray about it or pray, pray against it, or pray it away. And you can see that it clearly wasn't wisdom for Joseph to share all of his dreams, what the Holy Spirit showed him to his brothers and his father. It just caused jealousy and division and strife amongst them. So sometimes the Holy Spirit shows us things that are just for us or just for prayer. And it is important to be discerning about those things too. I know what you mean. Um, Tracy said, I never fast before. Do we not eat from six to six and then we can eat a light meal? If you're doing the six to six fast, Tracy, um, my wife and I, all of us, we're, we're just doing a total fast, which means for 21 days, we're only drinking liquids. We're not eating at six. You know, if you've never done it before, it's a great way to break in. It would be like from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. water only, you know, and then at 6 p.m. you could have a meal, you know, and then start in again. But the most important thing is that you're praying and taking time to press into the anointing. Um, Emmy says, what all do you drink on tastings? Smoothies? I don't really drink smoothies unless I'm like preaching heavily and I'm outdoors like in the heat or whatever. But, um, you know, I'll drink coffee. If Now, I'm talking about if I'm, if I'm going the whole 21 days or whatever with only liquids. I'll drink some milk, some coffee. Uh, you know, like I'll have milk in my coffee. Uh, I'll... I, I sometimes will drink juices. I drink diet sodas. I drink, um, sometimes like tonight I had a, uh, I had a, a, an energy drink. I drank a monster before I came on the broadcast. Um, so I'm not super strict. I don't drink things that are super thick. Like I'm not out getting milkshakes and smoothies and stuff, which is just blended food. But you know, if you're drinking, let me tell you something for all the people that get super legalistic about what, what you can drink on a fast. If you're fasting 21 days, your body will feel it. And if you're just drinking, let me tell you something. You'll lose about 20 pounds over 21 days. So your body knows it's being buffeted. Trust me when I tell you that. I've done a ton of 21-day fasts, and at the end, I'm always 21 pounds lighter. Your body knows you didn't eat. Doesn't matter if you drank a latte. Doesn't matter if you drank grape juice. Doesn't matter. Your body feels it and loses weight. It's being buffeted. If it offended someone, Scotty, maybe um, maybe ask ask them to forgive you if it was something that offended them, whatever. Do your best. I, I'd have to know more about the situation. Soup broth is good. That's exactly right, Mary Sue. 
Um, praying in tongues is considered praying, Nilsa. Good question. Um, yes, Teresa, that's, a, that's the same text where you would, um, that's the same text where you would uh, send your prayer request to me. Monster, that's exactly right, Pam. You know, forgiving, so what about juicing? People get more into like preparing their drinks for their fast. It's like with a Daniel fast, you know, people get more uh, caught up in like what recipes they're going to do for the Daniel fast than they do actually fasting and praying. You know, just grab something to drink and keep on fasting and praying. I mean, I, you know, if, if you feel like it's just so much more healthy for you or whatever to, to juice, but, you know, just focus more on the prayer. If you got to, if you're drinking, drink, you know, but it's like focus on the praying, focus on seeking the face of God. I can't tell you the meaning of that dream, uh, Nankusi. Ben lost 24 pounds on the fast. Listen, let me say it one more time. Um, we have resources for you on the website, miracleword.com forward slash fast. And uh, there's videos there. If you get our app, we have prayer points in the app. Um, it'll, it'll be a massive blessing to you. I will give you kind of a behind the scenes. One of the things that I'm trying to do right now before, I love you, Luenda. Have a great night at work. One of the things I'm trying to do before the January fast starts is I want to put together kind of an all-in-one fasting guide where we release a book that has uh, kind of the revelation of all of the things that men of Pentecostal men of God have written through the years on fasting kind of covering all the Bible says about fasting, what you need to know about it, the practical stuff, the spiritual stuff, the blessings of fasting. I want to put it all into one big guide and, and make it available to, to those of us that will be fasting in the new year. But uh, that's something I'm still working on. It's not anywhere close, anywhere close to ready. Uh, but I just want to give you a heads up. The thing that's getting closer as I'm writing it is the Spirit-Filled Believer's Guide to Speaking in Tongues. That'll be the next book that I release, uh, and I'm very excited about that one. We're going to do a whole series of Spirit-Filled Believer's Guides. I want to say thanks to everybody that's sowing seeds. I really appreciate it. Carolyn appreciates it. We're going to touch this generation before it's too late. You're helping us do that by, by your faithfulness. All of our partners, can I tell you, I love you so much. Those of you that are sowing on a monthly basis, we appreciate you. You're standing with us as this generation's being changed. And God is also, a, he's crediting those things to your account in heaven as well. So thank you very much. Thanks for standing with us. Amen. Yeah, Teresa. What's up? Washington, Pennsylvania or Washington State? Or Washington, D.C.? Yeah, so here's the rule. Mary Sue said, do you have information about coming off of a long fast properly? Um, it's it's a kind of a very um, basic rule of thumb, right? For any, for, for every seven days that you fast totally, I'm talking about like a total fast, even if it's really liquid only, it's helpful to do this. Uh, and especially if you do water only. For every seven days you go, you need to take one full day to ease your way off the fast. So if you did 21 days consecutively, you need to take three days to ease your way back into eating again because your digestive system shuts down, all kinds of stuff. You don't want to hurt your stomach. So if you go 21 days, come back in very easily with some soups, some... Um, you know, some salads, you know, leafy greens, don't eat steak. Don't come back with a burger. Don't come back with bacon. You know, don't come back with pasta and a hoagie. Come back easy. You know, so, some salads, some greens, let your body process that stuff first. And, um, it, it'll help you. So for every seven days you fast, take one day to come off of the fast and ease your body back and use wisdom. I love you guys so much. Have a phenomenal night. Thanks to everybody that's sowing, giving, standing with us, praying with us, fasting with us. It's going to be a great month, man. It's going to be a great rest of the year. I'll be back in the morning, 10.30 a.m. Don't miss it. 
And then also tomorrow, 3 o'clock is Carolyn. I'm going to be back here again tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I love you guys. Have a great night. I'll talk to you soon. Later. Hi, this is Stefan from Feed the Hungry, and I want to say thank you to Brother Teddy and Sister Carolyn Shuttlesworth and all the faithful partners of Miracle Word. You're preaching the word around the world and you're feeding the hungry all around the world through your partnership with Miracle Word. And we started this year with about 251,000 children, orphaned and vulnerable kids in 24 nations around the globe, getting food in the future, a good hot meal each and every day because of friends like you. Right now, we're just over 278,000 kids and we're praying and believing the Lord for 300,000 children to have a life impacting change through this ministry. It doesn't happen by ourselves. This is what partnership is all about. Each joint supplying, as Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, 16, when everyone does their share and when everyone focuses on their part, the whole body is edified and grows exponentially and grows in love. Well, the message of the Word of God is traveling around the world through Miracle Word and through your partnership with this ministry because we're not only feeding the body, but feeding the soul and the spirit as well. We've distributed over 127,000 copies of the Gospels of Jesus in these nations and over 140,000 versions of Bible adventures specifically designed to teach kids the Word of God. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for joining together with Feed the Hungry. And as we touch and change the lives of the least of these, the blessings of God come upon you. You know, the scripture says, he who gives to the poor isn't just giving to the poor. You're lending to the Lord and he will repay. So we believe the Lord for a mighty harvest in your life on the seeds you have sown in spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' name. Thank you again.